Chapter 1301 Precious Gift It was too late for them to run now. Night Empress was wrathful, and she gestured with her hands to blanket the helpless spirits and creatures with a scornful darkness. They mustered every ounce of strength they had left in a bid to repel the malevolent dark, but it was a futile resistance. Their powers were consumed by the looming black, as if it fed on their offerings. And it wasn't long before the dark ravaged their bodies like a hungry beast before an open feast, in dire need of a feeding. Pa, I see through your tricks. No god emperor bellowed, thrusting forward towards night empress with his no god sword. His arrogance was blinding, and he did not believe demigods could return from the fourth god sanctuary and enter the third god sanctuary. He thought this was all a ruse, an illusion conjured by the trickster Lotus, or a doppelganger formed by some force through past memories and history. Seeing no god approach her, Night Empress was unconcerned. She was as real as the night, and as real as the darkness with which she swarmed the imperious emperor. This had all transpired over the course of a few measly seconds, and then, as quick as it had begun, it ended. The darkness was removed from the area. Hansen looked around, noticing all the creatures and spirits had disappeared with the violent black. Where are they? Where did they go? Hansen asked. They're dead, Night Empress said. Hansen asked, can they respawn? No. Such a killing is absolute, Night Empress answered, with perfect certainty. Night Empress then frowned. Hmm. But that spirit stone can allow him a respawn. Not bad. Mother, are you referring to no god emperor? Lotus Empress asked. Night Empress nodded, then told her, My time here is limited. Why don't you come with me to the fourth god sanctuary? I can guarantee your safety there. I can come with you? As easily as that? Lotus Empress asked in wonder. Night Empress assured her, Of course, you should know that. Why else would you summon a demigod? Why else would you summon me? I didn't summon you. After Lotus Empress said this, she eyed Han Sr. Night Empress said, Then I'll bring him, too. Hansen was quick to reject her offer. He told her, thanks, but no thanks. You should just take Miss Lotus with you. As pleasant as his words were, beneath the surface, Hansen was hissing a fire directed at Dragon King. His information had been incorrect once more. Summoning a demigod was a shortcut into the fourth god's sanctuary, and a method in which a being wishing to ascend could bypass the ten steps of the holy door and its cleansing flames. As much as Hansen appreciated the offer, he would prefer to walk the purifying steps. And that aside, he had yet to open his tenth gene locks. And furthermore, Hansen knew he could just step into the evolution pool for a shortcut of his own. Mother, I will take the steps as you did, Lotus Empress said. Night Empress ran her fingers through the hair of her daughter and smiled. She told her, it is good that you wish to pass through the holy fire. Not only does it speak to your strength of heart and resolve, the benefits are tremendous. Night Empress then proceeded to summon something dark. She handed it to Lotus, telling her, I don't have much time. Take this. If no god emperor returns for you, use it. Use it to destroy that monster. Night Empress then walked back to the altar and became a statue of stone. Hey, don't go yet. I was the one who summoned you, after all. Where's my gift? Hansen pleaded as she went, but she gave no heed. She was a statue before he finished and he knew he wasn't going to receive a response. The altar then disappeared in a final flash of darkness, and the next time Hansen and Lotus Empress looked around, they were back nearby the luminous stone. The luminous stone was webbed with cracks, unlike before. And after an uneasy tremble, it shattered completely, collapsing into a mound on the ground. The Jew Hansen possessed finally stopped vibrating incessantly. Hansen was gutted, though. Despite his efforts to summon Night Empress, he hadn't received a single goodie. Ha ha. Lotus Empress was laughing, in a cheery mood Hansen had not known she could display. She went ahead to comfort him, offering, How about I give you a gift instead? What gift would that be? Hansen thought getting something off Lotus Empress wouldn't be half bad. But then Hansen's eyes drifted to the black jewel she had been gifted by her mother, Night Empress. A streak of envy crossed his mind, and he thought it'd be great if he could have it. Hansen knew she wouldn't be giving that to him, though. Lotus Empress swung the jewelry in front of Hansen and told him, It's this night gem. Wait, you're giving that to me? Hansen was made exuberantly happy, but he was jumping to conclusions. Lotus Empress pulled back her hands that caressed the lovely thing, saying, Of course not. Then why swing it in front of me? Are you taunting me? Hansen asked with a dried attitude. 
Lotus Empress was emitting a vibrant radiance, and she seemed to be genuinely happy after all that had happened. She said, Yes, haha. But don't worry, I have something better for you. You can offer me something better? Hansen didn't think anything could beat a gift that was given by a demigod. Yeah, do you want it? Yes or no? Lotus Empress asked. I'll take anything you are willing to give me, Hansen answered. Since Hansen had already taken a bunch of holy baby fruit, he was down for something else off her. Besides, he was the one who summoned Night Empress. Hansen thought he was due a reward for that deed, for sure. Lotus Empress then walked around Hansen in circles. He admired the delicate grace of her steps through an intense observation of her body. She was gorgeous. Before Hansen could figure out what she was doing, though, Lotus Empress told him. How about me as your gift? You mean? Hansen couldn't believe the stunning offer he had just received. Yes. I am your gift. Isn't that better than a measly night gem? Lotus Empress spoke with a seductive drawl to her words, in an attractive lure. Oh, you're right about that. You're much better than a silly jewel. Do you need to pack a bag? Or are you already prepared to come with me? Hansen looked at her with avaricious eyes. Chapter 1302 Ten Jean Locks Opened Lotus Empress followed Hans into the underground shelter. She brought Empty Witch and a super creature comprised of vines with her, too, the latter being named Green Vine. They were also told to adhere to Hans Sen's authority whenever needed. Lotus Empress still required Hans Sen's help, as she had dubiously explained during their initial conversation, and it prompted the formalities for a trade. It was something Hansen agreed to. Before he opened ten gene locks, the night gym would allow even him to defeat no god emperor easily. Regardless, Hansen asked her about his body. She told him that when a body was attuned to and focused on one gene lock, gene locks were easier to open. If a person could be proficient across a number of elements, the lack of an anchor made the process of opening gene locks much more difficult. Hansen was stuck in a rut due to this, and over an extensive amount of time, no matter what he tried, he had been unable to open his tenth gene lock. It was revealed that it would take something like a holy baby fruit to help. But Hansen was only able to eat nine of them, and being lucky enough to eat the real one was all down to the roll of the dice. It would all be down to luck for most beings. After news of what had occurred in Evil Lotus Shelter spread, it felt as if the very foundation of the Third God Sanctuary had been violently shaken. The thought of that vast number of emperors and super creatures being sacrificed was crazy to imagine, but it was a sad reality to most, with the rapid expansion of humanity. With Moving Star Emperor having been among those sacrificed, Hansen was able to happily expand his growing empire and assert dominion over his shelters and lands. No god shelter was nowhere close to there, and news about him had been scant since the day of the sacrifice. Regardless of what he was up to, he didn't show. Hansen took Purple Emperor with him, and they did what they could until they reached Cup Demon Shelter. Then, they stopped their advance. Cup Demon Emperor was the third son of God. He was very powerful, and thinking he wouldn't be able to defeat the spirit, Hansen thought he should play things a little safer and not invoke his ire just yet. Hansen wanted to open his tenth gene lock next, focusing on that first and foremost. So, he shelved his plans for expansion until the day he grew stronger. Hansen consulted Lotus Empress, and then decided upon opening Jade Skin's 10th Gene Lock. He did not want to open the Blood Pulse Sutra's 10th Gene Lock just yet, as its benefits weren't all that profound. They mainly strengthened his genes and provided him super sperm to benefit his future descendants. For the here and now, it was best avoided, and Hansen wanted to level up the Dongshin Sutra by himself, as that was his bread and butter, his pride and joy. Therefore, it made the most sense to open Jadeskin's 10th gene lock. Hansen kept seven of the fruits and gave the rest out to his companions. And of course, Hansen held on to the real one he had collected before No God Emperor Gate crashed the event like a big party pooper. While he went to a secluded spot to enjoy every last morsel of the genuine fruit, he told Zero and Silver Fox to go outside and guard the area. After consuming the juicy fruit, he quickly cast Jade Skin and allowed it to absorb. As soon as this occurred, he felt as if his body was crystallizing. The longer Jade Skin ran, the more Han Sen's body became like crystal. He was swiftly becoming what looked like a sculpture of ice. Han Sen's brains and organs could be seen via his body's transparency, and even they too were starting to appear crystallized. Eventually, he became a statue devoid of any life force. 
it took a while for something else to occur, and when it did, the crystal began to adopt the creamy color of jade. Catcha. A crack began to creep across the creamy jade, until it split and zigzagged across the entirety of Han Sin's new, statuesque form. Dring. The jade shattered, revealing Han Sin's true self once more. Han Sin felt as if he had just been reborn, and every aspect of his body had been replaced. His hair shone with the sparkling beauty of starlight. Hansen's entire body was glowing, and he looked rather weird. Even a demigod wouldn't have been able to tell if Hansen was a living person. It wasn't because Hansen was dead, though. It was because his life force was now hidden inside his body. It had been cloaked. Hansen opened his eyes, which now held the glittering beauty of jewelry. The holy baby fruit had indeed helped him open the tenth gene lock of jade skin. It might have only been one gene lockup, but the difference between a being with nine gene locks and a being with ten gene locks was staggering. And Hansen could feel the power inside him now, almost to the point of scaring himself. It was frightening how mighty he had become. After opening this tenth gene lock, his senses were incredibly powerful, too, but in a different way than they were with the Dong Shen Sutra. From what Hansen could see now, the world looked different. Hansen donned his armor and went outside escaping the notice of Zero and the Silver Fox without even trying. To get them to notice him, Hansen had to speak. Zero, attack me with your bone dagger, Hansen asked. Zero seemed to hesitate, not wanting to hurt him. He saw this, so he told her, don't worry, little Silver is here. Zero nodded, and then a red light came flying towards Hans' senator he felt as if he was unable to dodge it. But Zero was aiming at his arm, not wanting to deal grievous harm to him. Hansen raised his hand to cut across and deflect the red light. When he did this, it was as if the bone dagger itself was decloaked. It was the dagger itself that manifested like a small red light. Hansen gave it back to her. When she killed Saint Fan, Hansen could not even detect its presence. But now, Hansen could do far more than notice its coming. He could catch it. Chapter 1303 No Dirt Fruit after opening ten gene locks, Hansen wanted to take down Cub Demon Shelter, but Lotus Empress needed his help before he could do that. She told Hansen what she wanted to do. For an ordinary king spirit, nine open gene locks was the max they could achieve. Obtaining ten was a supremely rare thing. For an emperor, opening ten was only the beginning. Once the figure of ten had been achieved, they had to work on what was necessary for them to climb the ten steps of the Holy Door. Walking the ten steps was a great gamble, and beings that braved the door had to be certain they were strong enough to survive. If they couldn't withstand the purifying flames of the stairs, they would die. Even beings like Xiong Yin were almost unable to complete the ascension process and endure the fire. Lotus Empress was confident she had what it took to brave the steps. Although she was the master of the holy baby fruit, she had no idea which one was the real one, same as all the others. So, to find out, she had to find another way. She had come to learn about the existence of a plant that was quite similar to holy baby fruit and did what it said on the tin. There was no random selection process. But harvesting the fruit was difficult, to say the least. That was why she held these events. They were all for selecting individuals who would help her in this task. She wanted to collect a fruit called No Dirt Fruit, which was an emperor fruit. It wasn't aggressive. It was just difficult to pick. No dirt fruit required a being with no element to collect it. If it was collected by someone else, the fruit would be polluted and would become toxic. Those who wanted to collect the fruit were required to use their hands, as well. Tools were not permitted in its collection. So, she requested that Hansen be the one to fetch the fruit for her. I found six super creatures and spirits to help me over the years, but they each ruined the fruit they tried to take. Now, there is only one left, Lotus explained. Sister Lotus, I can take the fruit as you ask, but I cannot promise you I am pure enough to collect it without issue, and please don't take it out on me if I fail. Hansen agreed, but he didn't want to set her up for a disappointment. Hansen was proficient with many different elements all at once, and the nature of his body was quite complex. He wasn't sure if that suited the criteria for being pure. If this doesn't work, I won't curse your name. I'll just attribute it to my bad luck, Lotus kindly replied. So, after that, Hansen decided to follow her to where they needed to go. He himself was rather interested in seeing whether or not he'd be able to collect the fruit without making it toxic. The no-dirt fruit grew on an island situated someplace on the endless sea. Even with their teleportation-like speed, 
It was a far off place to get to, and it'd take a while. Further, she could not use her skills forever to get them there. So, Onsen asked Flying Fish King to take them to the Endless Sea. The Fish King was one speedy boy, and it carried them there at a pace that far exceeded their own teleportation capabilities. Ji Yin and had brought Bower back as Han Sen was preparing to leave, so when she heard he was going off with the Fish King, she raced over to go with him. Hansen asked Empty which why Bauer was what she called the Holy Spirit, and the answer he received was that Bauer was a pure being. Ordinary people couldn't sense this, and she herself only found out when the Empty Vine itself was maturing. Empty which had thought Bauer was some powerful third god sanctuary seed during their initial encounter. But when she came to the third god sanctuary, it was only then that she realized Bauer was far stronger and far greater than she had imagined. The genes of the holy baby fruit were not as strong as Bauer, and the holy baby fruit tree was already the best in the third god's sanctuary, so who or what Bauer was perplexed her and Hansen both. And now that she could see Bauer once again, she was unable to sense her genes. Hansen knew Bauer was more than just the life's ponosome geno plant. There were many plants that could bear creatures, but none were able to exit the sanctuaries and visit the alliance like Bauer could. The sea they ventured across was called the Endless Sea was because no one had yet sailed to the end and returned to tell their tale. Even stranger, the sea was in the sky. It was a ceiling to the ground below, where gravity did not operate correctly. When you entered the area, you had to remain close to the ground. If you didn't, you'd be sucked into the sea and fall into it as if it were the sky above. Across the years, few had returned following being sucked into that sea. To step away from the ground, you had to first reach the island. The reason Hansen brought the Fish King was because it was the only creature that could survive the waters of that sea without issue. If they accidentally left the ground, they would not immediately lose their lives. Chapter 1304 Endless Sea When Hansen saw the Endless Sea, he was taken aback. He was mesmerized by the sea that hung overhead, with fish swimming below its glittering waves as if all was normal. Hansen thought the primary threat would be those sea creatures. Ordinary super-creatures could not force them away from the ground, but the presence of a berserk super-creature could always rattle them enough to find themselves plunging upwards. Hansen strode across the ground as the fish king escorted them from above. It made Hansen wonder if the Endless Sea's power was true. After all, the fish king seemed to be unconcerned. Fish king, catch me. Hansen wanted to see what would happen if he jumped. Fish king lined up with Hansen, so he could cushion the fall and be a vessel for Hansen to sail upon. Then, after his feet left the ground, he felt an invisible force tug him upwards to the sea. He felt as if gravity was turned on its head and flipped, but then he had trouble reorienting himself. Bauer also made sure to go with him. Hansen used jade skin, but he still fell fast. Hansen grabbed Bauer and aimed at the fish king's back, making sure not to miss. After landing, Hansen was above the sea. It was like the blue sky and the earth had traded places with each other. It was a strange and rather amusing thing, watching Lotus Empress walk on the ground. To him, she was treading a ceiling upside down. Let Fish King take us. It's faster this way, Hansen called out to her, to hurry along the proceedings. Lotus Empress thought it would be best, too, so she jumped up slash down and landed on the Fish King's back. The Red Bird still frequented Bowers' company and it had tagged along for this little adventure. It fluttered its little wings and lifted itself to hover above the baby's head. Then, it transformed itself into a fish and swam alongside the fish king. After turning into a fish and taking a brief swim, it hopped out of the water, turned back into a bird, and flew back to its perch on Bao's head. Hansen was surprised as he had been the first time he found the little creature, quite surprised something could wholly transform like that. It had kept following Hansen and Bauer for the longest time, ever since it was first found in the pond with Xiechen King. But aside from the ability to transform between a bird and a fish, it hadn't proven useful in any other capacity. It was pretty much a useless tag-along. The fish king continued taking them to the island they wished to reach, but after a while, a sudden shadow course below the waves. The fish king swung its tail, firing a gold light into the sea. Then it took itself airborne. There was a big, seemingly hostile creature tailing the fish king. It looked like a shark with two heads, and it had left the water in a similar flight, too. Unfortunately, its intelligence was lacking. It tried to bite the fish king. It was only a super creature with nine gene locks open, 
so it was a futile attempt from the get-go. The fish king swung its tail to smack the creature away, and it was reminiscent of an old-fashioned face-slapping. Mind you, it was stronger than the average one, and it occurred multiple times until the nasty squelch of a broken watermelon sounded. One of the heads was broken. The other shark head screamed in a display of fright. Then it tried to swim away. Hansen didn't want to let it go, though. He finished the job with a sword, lopping the second head clean off. Super creature two-headed shark killed. No beast soul gained. The flesh of this creature is inedible, but you may harvest its life geno essence. Consume its life geno essence to gain 0 to 10 super geno points randomly. Hansen wanted to grab its life geno essence, but the fish was sinking very fast. It was sinking far faster than was normal, as if it had been latched to an abyssal vortex that dragged it down quick. The bird suddenly turned back into a fish, though. Then it dove into the sea. Not long after, the fish came back with a life geno essence in its mouth. Not bad. It looks like you're good for something, at least. Hansen was surprised, as not even the fish king was willing to go down for it. The fish turned back into a bird and landed on Hansen's shoulder, then it tweeted to him. Let's return to the ground. If something bad happens to the fish king, there's nowhere we'll be able to stand, Lotus said. Hansen nodded in agreement, then the fish king flew up and delivered them to the land. After landing, the gravity was switched. It was the sea that was overhead now. The fish king returned to the sea and continued following them just in case it had to catch them. After a half day of travel, nothing else bothered them. But suddenly, a large group of fish came swimming their way. They kept on jumping up towards the surface. They looked like three-meter-long swordfish, but they behaved like hungry piranhas. Are they coming to us? Hansen wondered with a frown. They are the endless swordfish, quite common. Their ranks range from ordinary to super class, but they aren't hostile. There must be a reason why they're all scrambling in this direction, though. Lotus Empress was frowning, too. Chapter 1305 Being Watched In great haste, a swarm of endless swordfish was headed in Han Sen's direction. They didn't come for him, but simply sped past him as if they were attempting to get away from something that lay in the direction Han Sen was traveling. Han Sen understood their behavior, acknowledging that they were fleeing some unseen menace on the horizon. They weren't there to cause trouble. After peering into the distance all around him, Han Sen finally saw it a shadow, accompanied by the sounds of disturbed water. When the endless swordfish passed by the fish king above, the sound of restless waters became louder than ever. And that was when Hansen saw it clearly. The monster was like an octopus. Reminiscent of the kraken, its arms writhed in unrest, hitting the water to create noise as if for fun. The arms and tentacles were peppered with countless suction cups, and it was clear that being grabbed by such a fiend would deny even the mightiest of creatures a chance of slipping its grasp. The octopus was blue, and on the other side of its arms were a number of eyes in asymmetrical distribution. The lack of cohesion in the placement of the eyes made the entire beast even scarier to look at. Another super creature? Hansen was delighted. He didn't need life geno essences anymore, but he'd never shy away from the possibility of earning another beast soul. Although Hansen had conquered many shelters and taken over many regions, he knew he wasn't going to be around in the third god sanctuary forever. There'd be a time when the protection and mantle for safeguarding the territories would fall to others, and when that time came, Hansen had to know other humans were strong enough to succeed him. If they weren't, it'd only be a matter of time before spirits attempted to return and claim what had been lost to human occupation. Having more super beast souls would help even the odds, Hansen believed. Just as this kraken looked ready to put up a fight, though, it stopped. All the swordfish, by this point, had fled far beyond its reach. And now, staying in one place, the octopus flailed its tentacles and arms around in a rather humorous display. What it was doing, Hansen wasn't quite sure. Suddenly, something grabbed hold of the kraken and tugged it below the water with fierce strength. The octopus looked like a force to be reckoned with, but it was dragged below the waters with surprising ease then taken deeper and deeper and deeper. It was gone almost as swiftly as it had first appeared. Hansen hurriedly called for the fish king to return to the land above, for he had caught a glimpse of a phantom shadow in the sea. In the place the kraken had been, there was now just a red mist sitting above the unervingly calmed sea. As for the octopus, it had obviously been killed. Let's go. Hansen thought it was best not to linger, so with an increase of haste, he instructed everyone to move at a quicker pace. It was frightening, 
trying to comprehend what manner of being had managed to want it kill a terrifying super creature like that kraken. Hansen still had the endless presence of the endless sea above his head, and it'd be there for a while longer. It was a realm that was as strange as it was dangerous, and the last thing he wanted to do was risk falling into the waters above. It seemed like a death sentence, with that unknown creature lurking beneath the blue. Lotus Empress felt no different, and she much appreciated the desire for an increased speed of travel. The shadow did not leave, though. They continued their journey, and whenever they looked up, there the shadow was. It seemed to be following them. Lotus Empress commented on its presence there, saying, Don't fight it. Remember, I still have that night gem for protection. Do you know what that creature is? Hansen asked. Lotus Empress said, I think so. I've heard tales of a wicked monster occupying these waters, and if I am correct in the assumption, that thing up there is what they call Sea Ghost. What can it do? Hansen asked. Lotus Empress said, No one quite rightly knows, but it has an appetite for super creatures, that much is certain. It's a picky eater, so it doesn't eat less powerful beings. Many spirits have reported their sightings of Sea Ghost, and how it explicitly enjoys grabbing super creatures and dragging them below the water to feast. Lotus Empress paused for a moment, as if in thought, and then she went on to say, but it is supposed to appear in the deeper regions of the Endless Sea. We haven't traveled that far, and what's more, we are headed for an island. It shouldn't be here at all. Did the Fish King lure him here? Hansen wondered aloud. Maybe. There's always the chance it's developed a new fancy for eating humans, and with a powerful human here, perhaps it was a rare opportunity it wished to test its metal against, not to mention its taste buds, Lotus Empress said. Whether she spoke in jest, amusement, or unnerving sincerity, Hansen wasn't sure. Well, if it shows its ugly mug, I've got a killing blow with its name on it, Hansen said with stern resoluteness. If a fight between him and the unseen creature were to begin, Hansen was at least prepared to take it on. He wasn't afraid. But for a long time, Sea Ghost merely followed them. It refused to show itself, but that just made the tension all the worse. And due to its appearance there, the entire region looked dead. No other life was to be seen. The sun was rising now, where it should have been sinking. It came up from the ground, melding with the horizon of the sea above. Nighttime was coming. Then, an extra-large moon appeared, alongside its retinue of silver stars. Hansen thought the sea ghost would try its luck under the veil of night, but still, nothing came about. It remained where it was, as if it was watching them, studying their every movement. With a monster hiding above, Hansen felt uncomfortable. He felt as if it could swoop down at any moment. Swooping was bad, after all. At midnight, Hansen saw the faint image of a mountain in the distance. It was very tall, and its peak seemed to be poking the sea that was still their sky. That is God Mountain. Three hundred miles past that, we will reach the island, Lotus Empress explained, before Hansen could ask. Hansen then asked, can we walk up the mountain? Or will it prove too high and have us dropping up into the sea? Lotus Empress said, there are stranger things on that mountain to worry about than the distortion of gravity. Not even emperors dare brave that place. Why? What's so strange about it? Hansen was going to heed her advice and stay away, but he was interested in learning what was supposed to be so scary about the mountain. Chapter 1306 Obsidian Elephant All I can say is, whoever ventures across that mountain does not return, Lotus Empress said solemnly. Although Hansen was sometimes reckless, even he knew it was best to stay away from such a place. If a risk was justified or worthwhile, he would always be the first to take the plunge. But a fruitless risk was never something he'd commit to, as he wasn't a simple thrill-seeker. So, Hansen decided it was best to take the long way around. He thought it would be better to walk additional miles than risk life and limb in the shortcut of cutting across the mountain. Before he could circle it, though, Hansen suddenly heard something roar, and then, nearby footsteps. The source of the noise was not too far away, and the sound of footsteps was steadily increasing in volume. Something was already coming for them. Hansen frowned, though, thinking there was something amiss about his entire venture thus far. Lotus Empress had been in this region many times in the past, but nothing like this had occurred in her previous visits. First, there was the ever-looming presence of Sea Ghost, in a portion of the sea it was not supposed to inhabit. Secondly, something from the mountain was descending down towards them, despite their desire to steer clear of the rise. Surely I cannot be this unlucky. 
To say things were going awry for Hansen would be an understatement. And to make matters worse, there were thick forests dressing the mountainsides. Whatever was coming towards him was cloaked in the dense foliage, rendering Hansen unable to see what it was. But it wasn't long before the creature emerged and revealed itself. It was a big elephant. It looked as if it was a beast forged from obsidian, and it appeared to be as strong and as sturdy as the material as well. As the elephant trampled its way out of the forest, each footstep rocked the earth. Much to their surprise, though, the elephant was not stampeding towards them. It was actually chasing after another person. The person it was chasing had to be around 50 years old. For a surpasser, an age of 50 years was not too shabby, but he looked worn and beaten, with a ragged appearance befitting someone that was double that age. The man was clad in a battle suit of the Alliance, but it was so broken and torn, it looked like the rags of a beggar. Still, the man did not seem injured. The absence of wounds and blood, despite the tears in his clothing, suggested the man was just about lucky enough to amass a number of near misses. Fortunately for the man, the obsidian elephant was not the fastest creature. It was quick but lumbering, and it gave the man enough space to breathe and do what it took to remain alive. The man then started running towards Hansen, screaming, Hansen, save me. Hansen was surprised the man knew who he was. He couldn't make the man's face out too clearly in the cover of night, but the voice was very familiar. Whoever it was, it was someone he knew. The fact that the man was covered in dirt and a variety of different leaves didn't help Hansen get a clear image of the man, either. Holy S.H. Asterisk T. Why are you here, Professor Bai? At long last, Hansen recognized him as Bai Ishan of St. Hall. Bai Ishan was Hansen's teacher, to put it modestly. And when Hansen's eyes registered who it was, he leapt forward to help him out. Be careful. It's a nine-gene lock obsidian elephant. It is frighteningly powerful. Bai Ishan shouted at Hansen, who was fearlessly joining the fray. His warnings did little to sway Hansen's resolve, of course. Before he could even finish his speech, Bai Ishan saw Hansen neck deep in combat with it. With hands that looked like they were made of crystal, Hansen turned into a figure of ice. Pang. The obsidian elephant was going at a blisteringly fast speed, and with a cobra-like reaction, Hansen was able to snap forward and grab its tusk. When the two mighty fighters got into it with each other, the landscape was quickly turned into a mess. As if there was a violent earthquake that was causing a landslide, the region was turned upside down in a muddy, dusty haze. The elephant had more than met its match with Hans Sr. By Ishan's jaw was in the dirt. He had spent the last ten years studying the creature, observing its energy flow. Needless to say, Bai Ishan knew a lot about this creature. At the very least, he knew it was not the sort of creature a person should jovially jump into battle against. Of course, he knew it wasn't the greatest of creatures. While it did have immense strength, its speed was its Achilles' heel. Still, its power was of such a height that it could want to kill any other nine gene lock creature it came up against. He had seen many creatures unknowingly stumble across it, turn tail, and flee. It was a monster no creature or spirit was willing to mess with. Bai Ishan wanted to study it and create a new hypergeno art he'd tentatively titled the Elephant Sutra. Fortunately, its slower-than-ideal speed was exactly what enabled Bai Ishan to study and investigate the creature for such a long time. But he had made a mistake this time and disturbed its rest. He had invoked its ire and angered it a great deal. Regardless, Bai Ishan was shocked to see Hansen do battle with it. I can't believe the power of a surpasser can equal or even exceed that of this elephant, Bai Ishan said out loud. A second later, his eyeballs almost jumped out the comfort of their sockets. Hansen's muscles quivered as he picked up the entire elephant in his arms. Then, as if he were throwing logs at some Celtic event, he lobbed it onto the ground a good distance away. Boom! A 50-meter-wide crater was formed in the ground which Hansen quickly leapt into to re-engage the elephant. Bai Ishan ran forward to catch a glimpse of what would happen next, and he accidentally stumbled into the hole. Hansen wondered why the elephant, despite the height it had been thrown at, did not get pulled into the sea above. Hansen, what have you been practicing? Bai Ishan said, standing back up. He had been creating the elephant sutra in the hopes of formulating a hypergeno art of incredibly raw, unbridled strength. After seeing the feat Hansen had just performed, he was starting to think he had wasted his time. Chapter 1307, Violent Hitting Before Hansen could answer, the elephant was back on its feet, 
charging towards him. To keep his teacher from getting hurt, Hansen pushed by Ishan out of the way. Then, with his fist primed, he launched a punch directly into the elephant's sturdy head. The elephant came to a sudden stop. It didn't fly away or even reel back. Like a car driving head-on into a concrete wall, it hit Han Sin's fist and stopped still. Silence returned to the ears of all there for a moment, right before the elephant slumped to the ground. Ping! Another crater was formed as it dropped. The obsidian elephant's body was incredibly strong. It stood up and looked at Han Sin with angry eyes that burned with a flame of hatred. Han Sin could sense the elephant's power growing but strangely, its body was growing smaller. The progress of its metamorphosis went with its heartbeat, and after the tenth beat, the elephant's size had reduced to that of a cow. The obsidian body was hardier than ever now, due to its more condensed size. It has opened ten gene locks. Lotus Empress called out. Hansen acknowledged this, realizing that it had only opened its last gene lock after he had delivered the brutal hit it had just received. By Ishan had long studied this elephant, but it was like a foreign creature now. It was surging with a power unlike anything he had ever seen before, and the terror made it difficult for him to observe the event. Bai Ishan had also forgotten he was standing on what had become the arena for the two titans to fight upon. He was in harm's way, and he knew he had to remove himself from Han Sin's side for a time. Fortunately, the elephant was not attuned with a specific element that unleashed widespread damage. The creature was purely physical, and thus, Bai Ishan had not been caught in the crossfire. Help me out by taking care of Professor Bai. Hansen issued the command to Lotus Empress. Lotus Empress then cast her protective lotuses to shield Bai Ishan. With jade skin firing on all cylinders, Hansen was ready to fight the elephant. It was his first 10 versus 10 gene lock battle, and he was hyped. The conditions of this fight would be ideal, as well. The elephant wasn't a tricky being, and it relied purely on physical strength. It was the perfect environment for Han Sin to test the extent of his power. But unfortunately for him, the elephant did not calm. Instead, it started to retreat, stepping backwards ever so slightly. Or at least, that's what it seemed like at first. The elephant looked to be as angry as ever, and its intent was to get a better run up. After walking back a good distance, it was as if a levee had broken. The elephant came racing down towards Han Sin with the speed of a bullet train. Before it had opened its tenth gene lock, the elephants might have been handicapped by its lesser speed. Now, speed was no longer an issue for it. In fact, it was coming towards Hansen at a speed greater than anything he had fought against before. Hansen did not need to rely solely on his fists, though, and he was confident he could still take it on, even at its own game. To test his mettle, he stood where he was, looked down, and put his head forward. He was going to butt heads with the rampaging beast. Pang. The two forces of nature collided. Hansen fell backwards a bit and patted his forehead. He could not feel pain. He could not feel anything. In fact, how little harm he had been dealt was actually quite creepy, despite the relief. He didn't have time to dwell on or admire the extent of his might, however. After stumbling back a few steps, the elephant was keen to try its luck once more. It raced towards Hansen again, like an arrow, wanting to try something else to flex the might of his tin gene locks. Hansen ran forward to meet with the elephant halfway. Hansen and the elephant went at each other like this for a long time. The region around started to look like a ruined and charred hellscape. Rocks were broken, trees were uprooted, and large chunks of land were cast and flung into the air to be dragged into the sea above. It was a mesmerizing sight to watch unfold. The stamping of their feet was enough to ruin and upturn the ground underfoot, as well. You can do it, Dad. Bauer called out. In support of Han's senator, she waved her bottle around as if it were a foam finger. Bai Ishan was frozen in shock. The obsidian elephant possessed a power unlike anything he had ever seen before, and he knew full well it had opened its tenth gene lock. But with that being said, he wouldn't be too surprised if Hansen overcame such a foe. He was, after all, the person who had taken down an emperor's shelter. It didn't detract from the odd generating spectacle that was their battle, though. It was incredible to watch him fight as he was. How in the sanctuaries did he become that strong? He's like a demigod that has cheated his way into the third god's sanctuary. This is amazing. Bai Ishan's mind reveled in admiration for Han Sr. He had researched and worked on his elephant sutra for the longest time, and even if he was successful in creating a brilliant hypergeno art, 
The technique alone wouldn't make a person as strong as Hansen was. Ping. 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 Hansen's forehead was a little red and sore, but the elephant's forehead was starting to bleed. Lotus Empress was in shock, too. Few emperors possessed the strength Hansen did. The obsidian elephant now sought to return to the mountain it had initially descended from, fearful that it might lose. Hansen thought about giving chase, but before he could commit to doing so, he saw the sea above become upset. The water was quickly thrown into turmoil as something emerged from the blue and tried to grab the elephant Hansen had been fighting. The monster was incredibly quick, and in a flash, it was on the elephant's head. When Hansen saw it, he was shocked. It was a pitch black bird that had come. Chapter 1308 Friend or Foe The elephant saw the bird come for it, and so it turned and used its trunk in an attempt to bat it away. The bird was swift with its talons, though, and it grabbed the trunk neatly. Then, with a quick turn, the elephant was pulled upwards into the sea. The elephant struggled the best it could, not wanting to go with it. But its resistance was futile, and it kept on getting pulled until the gravity flipped and it fell into the blue. Hansen wished to stop it. The elephant was his prey, and Hansen had exhausted quite a bit of effort in trying to defeat it mano mano. But unfortunately for him, the bird was too fast, and it was too late for Hansen to stop its snatch. The bird disappeared beneath the surface of the sea, taking the elephant with it. Strangely, Hansen noticed something else this time, though. He saw the bird transform into a fish the moment it took back to the water. What the? That thing is just like the red bird. It can turn into a fish when it takes to water? Hansen frowned, as a few other thoughts and theories crossed his mind. Perhaps it was because the elephant had been born in the area, but Hansen noticed it had not been taken under and finished off. In the water, it was left alone by the fish bird and allowed to swim towards the peak of the mountain which touched the water. But before it could get there, the fish opened its mouth that was laden with teeth and took a big bite out of the elephant, then swallowed it. The elephant was bleeding profusely following the bite, but overall, the wound was mild. Then, the fish opened its mouth again, and almost to its surprise, the hardy elephant began thrashing at the waves of the upset sea. Hansen did not expect them both to be fighting in such a manner. But regardless of what might have been occurring, the elephant was at a disadvantage. It might have been able to swim, but it wasn't very proficient with the act. And no matter how strong it was, it wouldn't last very long in the tumultuous water. Just as Hansen thought this was about to end, though, a howl came from someplace on the mountain. There was a white turtle, the size of a mortar, swimming towards the two that were engaged in a fit of battle. Hansen took a closer look at what was going on and noticed there were in fact six turtles. They had all come to assist the elephant. They were all super creatures, too. They had not opened their tenth gene locks, but their shells were sturdy. Whenever the fish bird tried to peck them, they'd pull their heads and limbs back inside their shells, the defensive properties of which seemed ample enough to protect them. The fish bird also received a few bites from the pesky turtles, amidst the rumble that was currently ongoing. With the helping hand it received, the elephant was able to reassert control over itself and continue its struggle to swim towards the safety of the mountain. The fish looked angry over the intrusion and the fact that the elephant was getting away. So, it turned into a bird once more and grabbed two turtles in its beak, then it tossed them into the sky. Hansen heard two catch a noises, indicating their fall was not a pleasant one. Taking a look, he was able to see that the shells of the two unfortunate turtles had been wholly broken. The other four turtles thought it best that they now scram, and so they did. They returned to the mountain as hastily as they had left it. The bird was not keen on letting them and their transgressions get away scot-free, so it tried going after them. The turtles were small, though, and try as the fish bird might, circling the mountain from above, it lost sight of them. So then, it turned towards another target. It was going to go for Hans Sr. Hansen knew it was not a foe to be trifled with or underestimated so he kept his tin gene locks open in anticipation of its coming assault. Lotus Empress prepared herself to fight, too, while the fish king readied itself for a departure to the sea above. But then, the strangest thing occurred. Just as Hansen was ready to unleash a barrage of attacks upon the approaching bird, it stopped short of him and dropped two dead turtles on the ground before him. The bird let out a brief squawk and returned to the sea, motionless. It appeared just as it used to, when it had been following Hansen and his companions on their journey. Needless to say, everyone was a little taken aback. 
They were shocked to see the birdfish had delivered two of its kills to Hans Sr. Lotus Empress was very confused, in particular. Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps that wasn't Sea Ghost after all. Lotus frowned, after issuing her best attempt at an explanation. Hansen looked at the red bird next, and thought to himself, they can both shave shift between bird and fish. Perhaps they're related? Maybe the big bird fish wants to take care of the little red birdie fish. He wasn't going to let the turtles go to waste, so the next thing Hansen did was pick them up. After removing their shells, he received another two life geno essences. After that, he cleaned up the flesh and gutted them, then prepared them as food. If their flesh was edible, that would prove they were second generation super creatures. Sea Ghost continued trailing Han San and his fellows after that, but it did not attack. Under its protection, for that was what they now assumed it was, they reached the island in safety and without further incident. Why is Sea Ghost protecting us, I wonder? Lotus Empress asked Han Sr. She thought he might have an answer, but the truth was, he didn't. And not being sure of what Sea Ghost was thinking, he could not reply. So, instead, he decided to ask by Ishan something. When he became a surpasser, he was sent to an abandoned shelter near the Endless Sea. The path they traversed was a shortcut he himself had devised and developed. Bai Ishan told Hansen about the Elephant Sutra and the research he had been conducting, and then asked Hansen what he had been practicing. Professor, you cannot abandon your research. There's something really tangible behind all this. There is a meaning to your research. As for what I have learned, it is a skill of the Shwe family. It is not suitable for just anyone to learn, however. If your research and development of a new hypergeno art is a success, it will benefit humanity. I know it will. Don't give it up, Hansen said, with a soft and reassuring voice. Chapter 1309 Battling No God Hansen thought the island would be something of an unspoiled paradise, like the Garden of Eden. He envisioned it to be a place of pure splendor and untouched beauty, but that image was quickly scorched away when his eyes finally caught sight of their destination. The trees were little more than naked sticks, zigzagging from the ground without their leaves, which lay scattered on the ground, black and dead. The landscape itself looked as if it had been wholly composed of mud, where grass was afraid of growing. It was like a vulgar swampland, laden with itchy ditches and bogs that were strewn with rotten corpses. Hansen's mind found it difficult to comprehend how a holy fruit could grow in such a place, especially one which had such sensitive and pure requirements for successful collection. Lotus Empress led Hansen to that wretched abode as if nothing was amiss. Before long, they came across a tree that was standing short at a height of around three feet. The tree was growing out of that wet muddy ground, yet strangely, its roots were sparkling clean. In the midst of that ugly, wet dump, the tree was emitting a fragrance that was actually quite pleasant. It was a strange and garish contrast to the landscape that now encompassed them, but the smell was so sweet that, if you closed your eyes, you could almost forget you were knee-deep in mud. This is the no-dirt fruit, Lotus Simpers said, with a soft gesture towards the tree. Before approaching it, Hansen looked at a neighboring tree and squinted. Then, he quickly pulled her back and away from it. Does the sanctuary's number one jester need to play assassin to get the drop on his enemies? Hansen said loudly, for someone unseen to hear. Lotus Empress was startled by his words, and she turned to where Hansen looked. There, as if out of nowhere, no god emperor was standing. No god emperor knew she would go there to collect the fruit, and that was why he had come. He had been waiting for their arrival. It was a risky place to have a confrontation. They were near the endless sea, and leaping about could have them twisting and turning through indecisive gravitational pulls. Furthermore, there was no guarantee they could beat no god emperor, even if they fought him on a place with proper footing. Hansen could not summon a demigod there, either. The conditions of their encounter now were poor, and there wasn't much leeway to navigate away from having one last decisive brawl with the spirit that seemed to enjoy hounding them. No god emperor's voice boomed when he spoke. How it comes about means nothing. Death is death. It's deliverance uncaring. You think you can kill us? Hansen smirked. I know I can. I know I will. Night Empress is no longer around to help you this time, boy. No God Emperor walked forward with his black sword raised, ready to strike. He didn't walk fast, just slow and steady. He was incredibly intimidating, and he knew it. He lowered the sword and pointed it towards Hansen, the person he most despised. That was his target. There was no doubt about it. 
He didn't even care to grace Lotus Empress with a glance. I didn't need to summon her to kill you. I just thought it'd be nice to see the old lady. As Hansen entertained no god, he passed Bauer over to Lotus Empress. Then, he started to glow and mask his life force. Let's kill him together. Lotus Empress held the night gem in her hand. That's okay. Look after Bauer and the professor. I got this, Hansen said. No god emperor did not wait any longer. He swung his sword in a sudden dash towards Hansen, with a frightening amount of power. Hansen dodged it with simple grace. The sword went by him, shattering a decayed skeleton that had been pinned to a tree behind him. The evasion was perfectly executed, and it made no god stutter for a moment. He had expected to kill Hansen then and there, and he wasn't sure if his human nemesis had escaped his wrathful strike through actual talent or dumb luck. The next second, he slashed towards him again. Hansen dodged the attack, only to be greeted by another sudden swing. Successfully, Hansen dodged that and the next few that came in quick succession. The attacks could hardly even brush his clothes. Lotus Empress was surprised, for dodging no god emperor's attacks was unheard of. She knew for a fact she'd have been cut down with the first strike. Hansen was actually quite merry now. After he had opened his tenth gene lock, he stood a chance in his battle with the likes of no god emperor. Of course, no god emperor did not think highly of his opponent. He brushed Han Sin's newfound power off his weak and simple fuel for cowardice, and that it allowed Han Sin to run away and little more. There were others who could see through no god emperor's attacks, but his focus was never on the power they held. No god emperor raised up his sword and began to brew a storm of power, like the rumbling of a volcano nearing eruption. As this was occurring, Hansen noticed a shadow rise up behind no god emperor like a demon. Lotus Empress had taken Fish King, Bauer, and by Ishan off the island. Now, she stood solemnly, clutching her night gem. Is he strong? Bai Ishan asked. Lotus Empress responded by saying, he is the son of god that ranked first in divinity's bout. Bai Ishan was flabbergasted, exclaiming, whoa, that means he's the strongest spirit in the entirety of the third god sanctuary. Will Hansen be all right competing against him? I'm not sure if he's the strongest, Lotus Empress said, before going on to explain, and Hansen has only just opened his tenth gene lock. Honestly? I don't know. Bai Ishan looked nervous, but that was when Bauer interrupted to say something a bit more comforting. She said, Dad will win. They thought Bauer was just like a naive child, unable to understand the stakes and powers at play. Hansen, back on the battlefield, clutched Taya and the Phoenix Sword. He was really looking forward to stress testing his engines and seeing what he could do with his jade skin that had ten gene locks open. The spirit and the human, each clutching their favorite weapons, ran into each other. They did not do so with blistering speed, but there was a gravitas to their battle that was rarely felt. This was a duel of tremendous significance, and it felt like the sky was about to collapse. Behind No God Emperor, there was a demon-like shadow, it bore talons that swung towards Hans Sr. Chapter 1310 What's Great About Jade Skin? The moment No God lunged forward, Hansen did so too. The demon was a gathering force around his enemy's sword, and it instilled a fear inside its opponents. It made them feel as if there was no escape, and the next hit would be their last. Hansen's swords were plain and did not contain any fancy powers. For all intents and purposes, they were ordinary and not special. Bai Ishan saw no god's sword appear behind Hansen somehow, giving no sound or indication as to its true course. But Hansen, clutching his swords, was leaning forward. Who will win? I wonder. Bai Ishan asked aloud. The two battlers moved too fast for his eyes to track, and it was all little more than a blur. Lotus Empress shook her head and remained quiet. She did not know. She saw the phoenix sword strike no god, which was good. But Taya did not block the attack coming for Han's senator. Fortunately, No God Emperor's attack did not connect. No God Emperor's chest was delivered a wound, which swiftly began to cascade blood. Han Sen's chest had a light wound, but it was just a minor scratch by comparison. It was mild, and little more than a scrape that oozed faint traces of blood. Han Sen was surprised Jade Skin could make his body so sturdy, and even attacks delivered by someone such as No God Emperor did that tiny amount of damage. No god turned around. His wound was nowhere near fatal, and he could heal with great speed, but he looked to be in shock. It had clearly been a while since he last suffered a hit in battle. 
Similarly, no god emperor could barely believe that he could only leave a scratch on Hansen's body, as he was able to damage Hansen before. You use the fruit to open your tenth gene lock? No god asked. Hansen did not answer, and instead, swiftly moved forward to attack again. Hansen got hit due to double fly not being as efficient as it could be. But still, it was fine. If that was the extent of no god emperor's attacks, Hansen had little to fear, and he knew it. The flashes of steel-on-steel -steel combat were steady and near-constant, illuminating the Dark Island. No God Emperor was unable to evade or even block Han Sen's attacks, and he repeatedly found himself being hit. When No God's sword hit Han Sen, it was as if he was banging a wooden stick against a rock. Bai Ishan and Lotus Empress were delighted, seeing this. But suddenly, No God Emperor flew up, leaving a stream of blood as he went. He ran off? Bai Ishan asked. Lotus Empress was in absolute shock over what had just transpired, as none had ever convinced no god to flee before. Hansen was not concerned with going after him, though. After all, even if Hansen did catch up and kill him, he'd eventually respawn at his spirit stone, anyway. He was strong, but not strong enough to break the spirit stone like the Azura Sutra had once done. The Azura Sutra could not bolster Hansen's defense as Jade Skin had, either. So that was okay. In the third god's sanctuary, Hansen was now almost invincible. He was a true force to be reckoned with. And so, with no god emperor out of the picture, Hansen decided to head back towards the no dirt fruit. Lotus Empress and Bai Ishan returned to Hansen's side. So, all I need to do now is pinch it off? Hansen casually asked Lotus Empress, as if nothing had happened. Yep. Go ahead, Lotus Empress said. Hansen reached out his hand and grabbed it. Hansen and Lotus Empress were both as nervous as each other, wondering if this would work. They had come a long way to get to this point, and Lotus Empress had spent a long time waiting for the right person to come along and help her collect it. With nothing happening to the fruit as he touched it, Hansen said, My body really is pure. Lotus Empress said, Nice. Pull it off and bring it here. Hansen plucked it off the branch, and just like Lotus Empress hoped, it did not rot. So, what do we do now? Hansen asked. Lotus Empress did not dare get too close to the fruit Hansen was holding, in case she accidentally polluted it. Could you help peel it for me? And then possibly feed it to me? Lotus went on her knees and opened her mouth. Hansen peeled the fruit for her, as instructed. Then he squirted the juice into her open mouth. Lotus Empress looked incredibly surprised when this happened. And as she did, her body began to glow as the pores of her body emitted a white steam. Hansen fed her the last drop of juice, and once he was done, he stepped back to watch the spectacle of her becoming completely enveloped in white steam. Suddenly, his admiration for what was going on came to an end and his face changed. He had received a call from both Moment Queen and Thorn Queen. Sister Lotus, something has happened at the shelter. I have to go at once. Hansen left Fish King with the others. He said goodbye to Bauer and by Ishan, and then flew back.